On Instagram and YouTube recently, I asked you guys to ask me a bunch of questions and today I'm going to answer as many of them as I can. I have a feeling this is going to be quite a long video, so get comfortable. I'm Avelina Damore, welcome back to my channel and let's get straight into it. Ooh, 95 comments. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to answer all of them. When can we expect new music and how did you get into designing? Well... I'll try to keep my answers brief so I can get through as many as possible. Bon and I have been working on new music ever since we moved into our new home about two years ago. Things were slowed down obviously by our move and we had to like build from scratch our recording studio. But we have been working on things non-stop. But I feel like our musical style is slightly changing and every time we kind of work on something, I get this gut feeling that it's not quite right. I do have a few covers that I've mentioned and I'd like to think that we could get them out sometime this year. We're also having conversations about whether it's still As Angels Bleed what we're working on or if we should release it under a different name or if we should just put it under my name. So it might not be at the foreground of what I'm promoting at the moment but it's it's definitely a big part of my life and I hope to get back into it as soon as possible. Designing is probably about a decade. I remember designing in 2010 for my wedding the Femme Fatale clutch. That was the first bag that I designed. But before that I, I did like the logos for my band and I designed a few t-shirts as well. If you haven't seen them hop on over to my online store. And prior to designing I was doing self-taught graphic design so I've always known Photoshop. I've always been able to to bring something to life in Photoshop if I just have it visualized in my head. So I feel like that's a really handy tool for designing and I know a lot of designers work differently they might sketch um, I do it all in Photoshop so if I do need to sketch it'll be with a Wacom tablet and I'll digitally draw it Janine asks what would be your zombie apocalypse plan how long do you think you could survive it in winter we don't really maintain our pool and it has like a sunroof that lets the light in so the water easily evaporates and I've always said that would be a really cool place to make a deck and just turn it into another room that the kids can use during winter so having said that, I would totally build that really quickly and use my in-ground pool as like a bunker slash shelter. As for how long I could survive, no fucking idea. You are beautiful and giving me Lydia Dietz vibes. Oh, thank you. Andreas asks, would you ever design anything for men? Yeah, <laughs> so can, can you go to my website? I have already. I've got a variety of men's t-shirts and I've got the men's Black Friday wallet designed specifically for men. Eleanor Lee asks, how did you become a designer and how do you fit your kids into that job role? Thank you, love you, look. Oh, thank you. It was very organic. Again, it came from my interest in graphic designing and using Photoshop and then photography and all those skills kind of combined. And then I just needed an idea in my head and then I had the ability to kind of draft it out. And that's kind of it. I mean, yes, there's a collection of skills that I have to be able to do what I do. But the main thing is being able to think up the idea. I mean, if you don't get any creative thoughts, then it's probably really hard to design. I also think I take what I do for granted a little bit. But I also, I really struggle with it. So don't think that everything comes really easily for me. Like at the moment, I'm designing a bag for Danny Devine. I've just started, it's my first mock-up. Tipping over my water. And I'm not happy. I'm not happy. <laughs> at all, but I've just started. I'm very hard on myself. I'm my worst critique. I remember coming up with several designs for Black Friday, the clutch. And he's like, nah, that's shit, that's shit, that's shit. You could do better, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, oh. So I haven't got Danny's one just yet, but it's, you know, it's not right until it is right. And when it starts to kind of come together and you're like, yeah, this is really working. It's very exciting. And it's much like songwriting at that point as well. You can hit a creative block and you can only get so far and then you might need to kill a chorus and you're like, this song is great, but it's only got a verse and an intro. It's Bond making noise again in my video. <laughs> He's making lunch. And then you, you get the chorus and then the whole thing comes together. Design is very much like that. It's just patience and it's just trying a lot of different things until you get something that's right. How do I fit my kids into my role? Very easily. I mean, three days a week they're at daycare, so that's making life a little easier. When they're at home, I'm playing with them, they're helping me cook, I'm cleaning, I'm doing more like housely duties. And I usually work when they're either not here, or if they're chilling and watching a movie on the lounge, or if they're in bed. So it hasn't really been an issue. I mean, it was when they were newborns, because they just need so much more of your attention, but now they're getting a little bit older, it has become a lot easier. Ah, Missy Ann says, your eyeliner is always gorgeous. <laughs> I find that so funny, because I struggle. I struggle so much. Which is your go-to, can't live without black eyeliner? I simply adore you, just say, oh, thank you. I kind of change it up. I think because I, I struggle with it, I try every different type of liner. Like I've got Maybelline and Rimmel little ones in the, in the pot with the tipped point. 
I am using pens at the moment. I'm finding them a lot easier. The one I've got at the moment is by Sigma. I'm really enjoying that. And when I use the gel and a very fine little brush, my go-to is Inglot. I will probably stick with one for about a week and then I'll go to another one just to try it out to see if I can get a better result or if I still suck at it. <laughs> Adele asks, what are your planned bag and wallet ideas for the future? Honestly, at this point, I don't know. I know I touched on this a second ago and I am designing one for Danny Devine, but I don't know where that design's going yet. It's too soon to tell. And as for the other collabs that I'm working on, I don't really start to see it in my head until I know who I'm going to collaborate with. I think I am at the point where I can start to work on my own designs and just release them under my own name. And I have got an idea for a coffin bag. I mean, so many coffin bags have been done, it's not incredibly original, but I do have a slight twist on how I want to do it. The idea is almost instant, but the sitting down and designing it in Photoshop can take absolutely hours, and then making the patterns and the measurements and all of that takes a very long time. It's very time consuming. And last time when I had that massive order, when I did the Goblin Queens, I did Black Friday's handbag, uh, Beatrice Mariano, who else am I forgetting? I'm sorry, I can't even remember Mav soon. And the Death Candy Coffin, that was like five at once. That was a very stressful time for me. I won't do that again. It was fun designing the bags, but then my manufacturer needed all these specific patterns and measurements, and it was a lot to do in one go. Cody W asks, what if any other future plans for As Angels Bleed? That is a good question, slightly touched on that before. We have two songs that are the closest to being complete. One is called You Make Me Wanna Die. And the other is a Sisters of Mercy cover. We've also started working on a typo negative cover. Comment down below if you can have a stab at what song that would be. As to what one would be released first, I don't know. Is it different sounding to the album? Yes, I mean every artist's album is different from their last because time passes and they evolve. I feel like our musical style has changed a lot. I'm not sure if we've actually found where we want to be yet, if that makes sense. It's that thing again, I'll, I just get this kind of uneasy feeling when it's not right and when we develop that new sound and the new direction, that uneasiness goes away. I know many of you have been waiting a very long while and some of you just know me as this chick that designs things and haven't even heard of my band, so go and check out As Angels Bleed. There's quite a bit of content on YouTube, there's the album of course that you can buy on iTunes or stream at Spotify. I'm very, very proud of that album and hope to have some follow-up music. I apologize if I'm saying this wrong. Leo asks no questions, but just wanted to send you love and wish you the best in your fertility journey, wherever that leads you. Thank you. B. Joanna asks, you're always adorable. I oh, shut up. <laughs> My question is, what was your first contact, anything musical, pictures, etc., that made you get into goth vampire stuff? Musically, it was probably Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails. I was in love with Twiggy Ramirez for a good while and even got synthetic dreadlocks that I made myself. I paid like a professional person to do it and they fill out and I'm like, wow, I can do this better. So I, I literally dreaded my hair. I'll see if I can find some photos. I did them blonde and then I didn't like it and then I did them black. And then it hindered my ability to sleep because <laughs> my head was so puffy. So I cut them off and grew up my hair. So musically, I would say that was my first contact. Image wise, for me, it all came from movies. Bram Stoker's Dracula is still one of my all time favorite movies for the cinematography. It is so inspiring. My entire bedroom aesthetic at night is kind of based upon that movie. Like I want mood lighting everywhere. You guys know me, I love my LED lighting. I just, <laughs> I literally just bought another five meters so I can light up my coffin shelf that my father built me. That's another video in itself. But I love ambience. I love fancy looking things. I love regal over the top things. I love fireplaces and candles and dripping wax. And I, I stay home a lot so I like to surround myself with things that I love. And I think my home is a reflection of what I'm into and what movies I'm into. <laughs> Samuel says, I want to hug you and kiss you for looking so pretty. <laughs> Uh, thank you. <laughs> Heavy metal mama. Hey, how are you? You've mentioned in previous videos that you are working on a new album. Okay, <laughs> I get it guys. I get it. Music, right? Back to the music. <laughs> Love the previous album, by the way. Thank you. I'm tempted to start refilming because I just realized there was like two massive bits of black lipstick in my teeth. <laughs> and shit like that really annoys me. And now that this is in 4K, you guys can like really see that. I apologize. Do you have a recording studio at home? And other than Vaughn, who else is in the live lineup? Well, there really never was a live lineup. What I mean by that was that As Angels Bleed was always Vaughn and I. We didn't want to present it as a duo because like, 
That sounds like rock set. So when we finished the album, we put the feelers out for some musicians and we found some cool people and we put the band together and we did a few gigs in Sydney. It never got to the point where we toured around Australia because uh, that was around the time where we relocated to the country so that made it difficult and we just had, we hit a lot of disappointments. Like everyone was telling us how great the album was and you do so well if you were overseas and you know, just go over to Europe and tour. I'm like, oh great, uh, without management, just, you know, leave everything. You know, leave my work, leave my house, leave my family on a whim that we will be really successful in Europe. Even if that had been the case, I think our priorities just changed, you know, with Vaughn being a little bit older than me and I was already 26 or 7 at the time. The idea of spending another five years touring pubs around Australia because it wouldn't even be like proper venue, you should be doing pub tours. It wasn't like the European or the American tour circuit where you could get on festivals and just go for three months and play every night at different venues and have it be exciting and get new opportunities. I know it sounds a little bit like I'm making excuses. But it was quite disheartening when we, you know, we had this magical live band and then you just kept being asked to play at the same venue all the time. Bald face tag, bald face tag, anyone that knows that venue, it's like, that's great, but how do you get above that? And there are a few bands in Australia that have gone out of the pop scene and gone up to the next level. Carnival are one that springs to mind, they're doing fantastic things. But yeah, as I said, um, my priorities kind of changed and I'm like, okay, well, this is slightly getting back into fertility, but my mother went through early menopause. And it was always like in the back of my head, I shouldn't wait too long to have children. And I definitely knew that I wanted to have children with Vaughn. We said let's move to the country and keep doing the music ourselves. And that, that's, that's what we're doing now. And I look forward to getting back into it. Touring life, like I've never really, really, really gotten into at all. The touring life of a band, I don't actually think I'm cut out for it. Like call me a bit of a princess or whatever, yeah, that's fine. But it's very disconnected and I have anxiety, I have depression, I reckon I would be one of those people where I just, I would be too hard on myself, my singing wouldn't be good enough, um, makeup wouldn't be good enough, you know, I just so. So we had Frankie on drums and Jack on bass and they joined us for the live shows and then it kind of just disintegrated and a whole bunch of things happened. We do have a recording studio that Vaughn built it all in our house. I should do a little tour in there. I might give you guys a little preview of the tunes that we've been working on. That would be cool. Amethystical, I hope I'm saying that right. Would you consider doing an Australian meet and greet if you had enough bands? I'm from Perth and been a fan of yours for about two years now. You're so beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're so pretty. Forever a queen. By the way, what would be your go-to go to foundation for being so pale? I've never applied foundation to become paler. This is just, I was born with it. <laughs> for Vaughn and the other guys in As Angels Bleed, I did apply a foundation. It was like deathly white. It was like stage foundation. I think that was by Manic Panic and I think it's called Vampire White. It's literally white, so it's very theatrical. Um, I would never put that on my skin because it would just, it would be too much unless that's the look I'm going for. If the meet and greet was with someone else, I think I could do it. And that's what we kind of did with Mahavsun in LA. I don't think <laughs> I could have done one on my own because like I just would have died of embarrassment. I'd be sitting there like, nobody loves me. <laughs> but luckily because it was with her, people came and I was very flattered that quite a few people came specifically to see me, which blows my mind. You would think that I would have more fans in Australia coming from Australia. But I don't think I'm at that point where I'm ready to really see. <laughs> I don't want to meet the disappointment. Zach Wheel, if I'm saying that right. What is your biggest regret? And if you could go back and change the outcome, the outcome, would you? I know this is going to sound crazy. I can't really think of any. There hasn't been anything that I've specifically done that has been that devastating to my life that I would want to change it. <laughs> Maybe not work at Sanity for like that year that I did when I was like 17 or 18 because that sucked. But it's not really of great importance to my life, is it? Lita asks, what is a place that you would love to travel to if it was totally comped at all expenses paid? Hmm, probably New Orleans. It looks so magical, so musical, and the cemeteries are definitely on my bucket list. The whole voodoo blues vibe is very interesting to me, and I'd love to visit two of the cemeteries, St. Louis and Lafayette. Ravana asks, what color and brand is the red lipstick you're wearing in the video where I asked you for these questions? It is gorgeous, and thanks for welcoming the sub. Oh. 
I believe it was Dream Girl by Lime Crime, but I'm not 100% sure. If that kind of looks like a cherry red, then it probably was that one. <laughs> Holly asks, hey, Valina, hello. I can't wait to hear your new music. My question for you is, how do you find being involved in the music industry as a woman? As a musician myself, I'm fascinated to see how the industry is changing as more women become involved and how women experience working in this industry. Also, just wanted to mention that I think your aesthetic is wonderful. You guys are so sweet. I'm feeling really weird today. A little self-conscious. Um, I found with gigging and things like that and people wanting to get involved, sometimes, very rarely, but occasionally people would want to get involved for the wrong reason, just because they might be a pretty girl like in that band. And you hear that happening, like, oh, they're just working with that person because, you know, the singer is good looking. I'm like, well, hang on <laughs> what if they're talented can't we work with this person because they're talented i can think of one or two occasions where something like that has happened but it's been very few and far between and this isn't really part of your question but some of my favorite singers or female fronted bands at the moment would be amaranth nightwish i'm absolutely loving hailstorm lizzie hale is fucking insane if she was around when i was learning guitar like 14 15 16 she would have blown my mind i think she probably would have been playing guitar at that time as well because i think we might be similar ages but her voice is phenomenal she's a modern day leader forward really really loving her stuff adele asks one more question what type of fitness regime do you, do you keep <laughs> do you want me to lie to you fitness 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 <laughs> I have a treadmill in my ensuite. I use it occasionally. I don't use it every day. No, 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 no. I find... I find working out so fucking boring. But I found what helps is to put on YouTube or watch a video or a show or something as I run. Because that, you know, doesn't make me stare at the clock. Because I'm literally like... Okay, I've been on here for one minute and then two minutes feels like forever and three minutes and by five minutes I'm like, can this just be over already? So not a huge fitness nut. I wish I was a bit more into it than I am. <laughs> Carol asks, how did you get into fashion design business? Your handbags are gorgeous and I wonder what inspired you to get into it. Thank you. I guess I've kind of touched on this previously. It was already having the skills of graphic design, Photoshop photography and them being combined with the idea of wanting to create some products that weren't really around like I touched on this before I made my very first clutch for my wedding I designed it for my wedding to use on my wedding day which I did because at the time I couldn't find any kind of cute gothic clutches now you can find them everywhere but I guess you could say that was the embryonic thought that started it all 